Hey guys, what's up? How y'all doing? I'm here to talk to you guys about Demon Slayers Kimichi no Yaiba Yukaku no Hen or you can call it Demon Slayers Kimichi no Yaiba Entertainment District Dark which is on episode 8. Now this episode right here was actually pretty crazy. I was actually pretty shocked myself to see how action packed it is and we get to know a little bit more about information about Uzui. Not to mention implicit information about Daki and Gyutaro, you know? So if anything else, let's just get this started. We have to it that, um... That Tanjiro delivers Nezuko to her box whatsoever and gets ready to go into battle once again. After the opening, obviously, we had to Uzui and Gyutaro were actually having a small talk with each other. Gyutaro's like, I'm pretty shocked, man. You're not like the other Hashira I ever seen, you know? Because they... Because a poison he uses actually will kill the Hashira very badly. Not to mention he sees um Uzui still standing saying that he has a lot of chosen talent i'm pretty jealous you know and we had to Uzui's like what the hell are you talking about talent don't make me laugh there are others who freaking have way better t have have freaking way better talent than me you freaking numb nut and we get to see that we get to see one two of the hashira that he mentions of how well, he mentions two Hashira implicitly saying there are some who is an enigma and the other one who just picks up a stork and become a Hashira in two months. Which is pretty amazing because I'm pretty sure, I don't know how long it took for Uzui to be at a certain rank of a Hashira. But one thing's for certain is that he admits, Uzui admits to himself that he has no talent, you know. And that he even says like he's from the Shinobi airline, Shinobi bloodline. And we have to it that Daki says... That's impossible. The Shinobi bloodline is supposed to have been destroy destroyed in the Endo area or in, er in that era a long time ago. But Uzui says, no, it does exist. And we get to know a little a bit about Uzui's past, you know. Not too much, but a little. He actually had a lot of brothers and sisters here and there. Sadly, however, they were all killed. Seven of, seven of them died when by the time he turned 15. And... Later on, because of the declining rate of the bloodline or shinobi, we have to it that, that the other siblings remaining ends up having to like him go through certain brutal training. Two of them only survive. Uzui and the, and his younger and his younger brother who's two years younger than himself, you know? However, they had his younger brother, two years younger, and his father has a nasty mindset, you know? They treat the subordinates as pawns. The women, they oh, they don't care. They're means to an end, you know, that kind of thing. That kind of like um villain, villainous like um traits that they have, you know. That I don't care about you. If you die, you die. You're nothing more than the pawn in this game that I don't, I can expend, I can, I can expend. Especially the women, which I go like pretty nasty stuff. But I think we understand why they're doing that. But we don't really know for sure until it's really confirmed. But that aside, we have to it that um. That out of all the shinobi, you know, that is in his bloodline and his siblings, only him and his younger brother, two years younger, survived. And the way how um, they both act, you know, is a very different story here and there. That aside, um, yeah, pretty f freaking crazy the way how it, how, it, how it goes about here and there. But that aside... Um, we have to it that Gyutaro and Daki realizes that the, po that the poison is actually taking effect on Uzui, you know? And that's pretty bad, man. I mean, Uzui is able to hold out the poison for a bit, but not for too long. Because even though you may be poisoned and you say you're highly resistant to it, that says otherwise. I mean, when I looked at Uzui, he he's sweating as hell, man. That's not good news. Which means he's really trying to keep himself composed and try to keep fighting here and there. But, um... Sadly, however, we don't really know if he may even survive, which is which is even worse because this poison already entered his body and it's already spreading, and he already got a cut onto his forehead, and that's even worse. I'm even surprised to see to it that he's even still conscious or alive right there because when you have something coming to your head or something, it's gonna cause you a lot of like stress depending on the situation. You know, I guess it's just through crazy indomitable skill and breathing technique and will to stay to stay conscious for now. You know. But that aside, we had to Inosuke, Zenitsu, and Tanjiro shows up and gets ready to go into action, you know? And Uzui says out loud, I finally understand how to defeat you two. So what? I have to, we had to behead you guys simultaneously at the same time, you know? Which we had to, Yutaro and Daki therefore talks about, like, um... Talks about this. Or should I say, Yutaro talks to this to Uzui and Tanjiro and the others, you know? Saying, well, let me tell you something. 
all those demon slayers tried and they died. You know, because they couldn't do that stupid simple thing. Let me also tell you something. My kill count is 15. My sister is only 7. I'm thinking in my mind, you're trying to behead two demon upper moon demons who shares that same upper position rank. Sometimes I wonder and ask myself, why are they not even in the up? How come they're not a little higher than they have to be? Because honestly, you have to behead two heads in order to win, and they're separate. I'm serious, man. I don't know what it is, but I don't. I don't know what it is why they are not in the in the higher ranks of the upper demons, you know. But I guess there are many reasons for that. Maybe we'll find out soon because I don't know. Anyways, um. Like I said, and repeating myself, Gutaro says, Many died, tried, tried, tried to behead both our heads, and they couldn't do that simple thing. I killed 15, my sister killed 7, and we devoured them all so easily. And we have two of that Zenitsu two clashes against Daki for a bit, and tells her, Hey, how about you start apologizing to, like, um, the girl you mistreated, you know? That's not, that's not freaking cool. And we have two, Daki and Gyutaro ends up saying like, Daki on the other hand says, forget it, why should I? Women are nothing, are meant to be tools anyway. Once they, uh, once they fulfill their purpose, they're thrown away like garbage. Why should I even care? And we have to it that like, um, that Zenitsu says, hey, let me tell you something as well then. Like, um. That just because something has done bad to you doesn't mean you should do the same things horrible done to you. Do you not understand that or what? And we have to it that Daki and Gyutaro end up making a speech saying, You're wrong. We have a lot of things, horrible things done to us. The things that made us suffer mentally and physically. We do them back to others to collect those debts to make them pay for what they've done to us. No matter how much misfortune we had, unless we collect it from those who are lucky or blessed, we won't rest in peace because that's the way how we lived our lives you know we killed off anyone who's ever leveled false accusations on us because etc so we had to it that Daki shows her true power since her brothers awaken and honestly we all suspected that Daki couldn't be this weak or something or she was somewhat weak here and there because if she was an upper rank like I said in my last um two episodes recap or summary that she would have easily possibly defeated Nezuko despite her being a demon or even on a super regeneration speed or level like her, you know? But that aside, um, now that Gyutaro is awake or something, we get to see how strong Daki really is, you know? She has better control over her, like, um, belt and she actually knows the movements of everyone else's altogether, you know? And we have to it that, like I said, this, is, this scene becomes very action-packed or something. Where Uzui and Tanjo takes on praying mantis that <laughs> that Inosuke calls, and then which is Gyutaro, and we have to it that Inosuke and Zenitsu take on like um Daki, you know, and we have to it that they actually are struggling for a bit. Tanjo himself included, because we all know he took a lot of damage here and there, etc., and he's very tired, you know. The fact that he's even alive that Uzui says is actually like um very surprising and shocking. As for like um, Tanjo and the others, they're still trying to fight for their lives right now, trying to take down this, these two demons. However, Inosuke and Zenitsu cannot even freaking like him get close to her at all. Even Inosuke says, if I get cut by those blood sickles, it's game over. Just getting one single scratch is very dangerous. Which, which shows that Inosuke's instincts and everything else as a fighter and a swordsman is like um, no joke. I mean, we all know how, how strong the guy is based on his animal instincts or how he trained himself, you know? The fact that he knows that those blood sickles are dangerous alone just shows that his instincts and senses are not to be underestimated, you know? The f but they can't seem to get near her at all, which really sucks. As for Uzui and Tanjiro, they are still struggling against Gyutaro, and Uzui's still getting a couple more cuts on his body thanks to Gyutaro's, like, um, reflexes, speed, and strength, you know? Well, even though in terms of like clashing on swords, they seem to be on par, but Gyutaro's speed and reflexes are much more better, or should I say stronger, you know? That kind of thing. But that aside, um, like I said, the battle rages on between like, um, between like, um, the Tengen, Tanjiro, Inosuke, and Zenitsu against Daki and Gyutaro, you know? 
And we see too that Hinatsu shows up at the end and fires a bunch of kunai at like Gyutaro. Gyutaro thinks it's futile to even try that but realizes something is up, you know? Which I won't deny. I mean, the way I look at Gyutaro, I'm pretty sure the guy is smart too. He says there's no way she'd be shooting these things for no reason if it's not going to affect me. Later on, Uzui managed to get like Gyutaro to get hit by one of those kunais or should I say so, those... Ninja little small sh whatever the k whatever they are called whatsoever to like um what you call it um get hit by them and later on those things are have have Westernia or should I say poison that affects the demons you know which is why that Uzli managed to cut off his legs and why Gutaro's like regeneration speed regeneration didn't kick in right away. Tanjo going in for the kill and the episode ends off there. Which I believe it can't be that easy. It reminds me of that time when it came to like um that scene with um the lower demon rank against Tanjo, you know, and Tanjo's sword just snap snap snapped, you know? This one is like similar but not even close. But you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, um preview of next episode title is called like um Taking down up upper upper rank, which is gonna be shocking and surprising because we are we all know that these upper rank demons are super strong. Sometimes, like I say, and I question myself, if Daki and Kyuta needs to have both their heads cut off, why is it that they're not in the little bit of the why? How come they're not a little higher than they have to be? You know, I guess I'll have to find that find that out later in the future. But well, I'm an anime only, so I guess that's another thing too. But yeah, anyways, um, it's going to be crazy from here on out. I don't know what's bound to happen, but next episode might end, might end all of it. End the battle, but guess we'll have to, guess we're about to find out. I bet a lot of manga readers must be excited too. Anyways, until then people, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm Alphazetto, have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out, bye bye Toot toot!